Come on. Do something. Run it up. This right here is the Mini DSP Flex 8 HD sound processor. Cool name, simple box, but what does it actually do? Well, it does what any DSP is supposed to do. Filters, gains, delays, parametric EQ, blah blah nerd stuff. How many channels you ask? Eight. Is that good? I mean, I can imagine scenarios where you'd want more, but hey, some models have only four. Eight is much more many. You can run fully active three-way stereo with six channels and throw in a sub for seven. Or go passive and build a 5.1 setup. Maybe add two ceiling speakers, because why not? Looks like you're still watching, so let's keep going. Besides the usual buffet of digital inputs, this thing comes with an HDMI input, if you choose the HD version. The regular Flex has Bluetooth. If you're still living in 2019, get the Bluetooth. Otherwise, HDMI is the way. It makes life stupidly simple. Check this out. My media PC goes into the TV via HDMI. The TV goes into the mini DSP via HDMI arc. Result? No matter what I'm watching, Netflix from the TV or browsing on the computer, sound goes to my speakers and I can use the TV remote for volume. Absolute witchcraft. Okay, not new tech witchcraft, but still, I love how smooth it is. But anyway, I didn't bought this for the gimmicks. I bought it to solve a problem. And yes, I bought it with my own money. This episode is not sponsored and I'm going to keep things as uh, honest and as objective as possible. If you've seen my channel before, you know I basically live in Satan's living room in terms of acoustics. Reflective back wall, no carpet on the floor, giant windows on the left, a corner hugging the left speaker, open space swallowing the right speaker. It's the acoustic version of a horror movie. So my expectations are low, like really low. But still, let's play with it. At first glance, there are four obvious ways to tweak this DSP. Method one, go into the app and manually adjust every dial like a lunatic. Fun for exactly zero people. Method two, use RoomEQ Wizard. Take a measurement at your listening position, give Roo all the information it needs and the parameters you prefer, and let it calculate the correction curve. Export it from Roo, Upload it to Mini DSP, done. Method three, which is today's star, uh, is uh, pay $30 to unlock Auto AQ. And basically, if you already paid $600 for the DSP and another $75 for the microphone, paying another $30 for convenience is basically nothing. And if I'm not mistaken, part of the money goes to supporting Room EQ Wizard which I must admit, I kind of feel guilty for using it for free. Auto EQ is basically method two, but you push one button and feel smart. Method four, DRAC. This DSP is DRAC compatible. DRAC doesn't only fix frequency response issues, it fixes timing issues as well. But the DRAC license is $250 and my system is passive, not fully active, so the benefits aren't so dramatic. This doesn't mean we're not going to test it another time. Anyway, before we dive into Auto EQ, I want to talk a bit about the experiment. I want to see how speaker placement and room treatment changes things. So first, I did the normal setup. Then, I added bass traps in the corner big chunky triangles that look like this. I have four of them, so I stack them into a sound absorbing tower of justice. Then I tested moving the speaker further from the wall with and without the absorber. The measurements tell the story. 
In the untreated setup, I had nasty cancellations here and there. Add the absorber, a bit better. Move the speakers out, much better. Picks and dips shrink noticeably. Sound absorbent didn't do much in this case. In fact, I got marginal better response without it for some reason. Ok, auto EQ time. Let me show you the exact procedure. So we start off in the mini DSP app and select our sound processor. And uh, things are a little bit different for me because I uh, also activated the DRAC license but it's turned off from here. So it will look a little bit different. It won't say... it, it, it will just say parametric EQ over here, I think, if I remember correctly. But anyway, we're gonna do the auto EQ and uh, see how simple it is. So you go over here and we have our eight channels. We are using just the first two. One is left channel, I think, and two is the right channel. And we are going to do the auto EQ thing for both of these channels. So you click on this and now you have the auto EQ button over here and you simply select it and we get this error so now after a fresh restart we can uh, start over So let's head back to the parametric EQ and select the, the channel number one, which is the left channel and go to auto EQ. Okay, and now you have to select your input device, which is your, it's already selected, the UMIC1 microphone or select whatever microphone do you have and the output device, which is the Flex HD sound processor. Now, you also have to upload the calibration file of your microphone. So the UMIC one, or if you have the, the Dayton audio microphone, or whatever calibrated microphone you have, it should come with its own calibration file. So this is unique to each individual microphone, so you have to go to the website of the manufacturer and input your serial number and download your basically exclusive calibration file which you upload over here. Now you select uh, your speaker type, in this case we have full range speakers and we should go ahead and check the levels. First we set up the microphone into the listening position which is right in front of my head and select check levels. Now you can see that the level is very low. I like to keep the generator volume at minus 20 and just increase this. That is minus 15. And we should keep the same level for the other one as well. So remember that uh, level. And now we hit measure EQ. And this is basically the measurement of just the left speaker and the correction they propose, which is automatically done. You just hit the apply button here. And that's basically it. So this is the parametric EQ applied. And if you head back, you can see that this is yellow, which means there is an active EQ going on. And the same thing we have to do to the other channel, which is the right channel. So we hit the auto EQ button. We go to check levels. Go to minus... So I hit the same level, minus 15, and now I'm going to shut up and hit the measure EQ button. Whoosh. 
So you have the blue curve, which is the measure, which is the actual measurement and the red curve, which is the target value we are trying to reach. And the yellow curve is the EQ proposed to reach said target. Again, we hit apply. Yes, of course. And now we close. And we head back, we see we have an active EQ. And now, out of curiosity, let's see how this fares up to the non-EQ measurement. The results you see here is with and without auto EQ with the speakers in their normal spots besides the TV with no absorber in the corner. And honestly, the graph looks way better than I expected. The dips at 60Hz and 150Hz are still there, but much shallower, and the low bass is corrected beautifully. That low frequency correction is immediately obvious. Before that, um, the speakers barely move unless uh, I cracked them up. It doesn't feel like bass boost, it's more like bass fixed. So, do I recommend this DSP? Uh, it's hard to say because it's not cheap, but hopefully the information you got from this video will help you decide. If you already have the DSP and you're wondering if it's worth it to, to purchase the auto EQ function, for $30 it's a no-brainer, just go ahead and get it. Totally worth it. Anyway, we're not done here yet, there is still the Dirac function which I want to test. So we shall see if it's a miracle worker or not. And if you are curious as I am, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video. And I'll see you next time. Peace.